Okay, let's let's just jump into the science. This because because we've got a, a, a rather impressive field that we're going to tackle the omics. Um, Steve, I want to I want to share this. You've been quoted as saying this: "Your DNA tells everything you could be. It does not tell you everything you are going to be." What does that mean? <laughs> yes, I have said that. It it it. Um, it, it means a lot uh, that 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 um, that saying or, or those words. Um, th it's so fascinating that the DNA in our bodies, in our dogs and cats' body, have the instructions for everything that that dog or cat needs to do in its life. Um, but what the animal ultimately becomes depends on what its lifestyle is, uh, what environment it lives in. So it's so interesting that this, this string of information known as the DNA not only has all of the instructions for genu uh, you know, just general cell function, how to make a membrane, a nucleus, how to take fuel and burn it, but depending on the role that that cell has in the body, it also needs to use specific instructions from that DNA to perform its function. If it's a pancreas cell, it needs to make insulin or digestive enzymes. If it's a GI cell, it needs to have the machinery to absorb nutrients, package it, and deliver it to the body. And these things don't happen willy-nilly. They're very coordinated, and they have to adjust constantly. And so the, the body uses all of this magnificent switching systems on the DNA to turn on genes, to turn the volume up, to turn the volume down. So it's a very dynamic process. And it's all dependent on the environment we're in. And given that nutrition is such a giant part of our environment and a controllable, well, an influenceable part of our environment, um, that allows nutritionists to consider, can we optimize, can we help an, a dog or a cat be better because of the way we feed it and how that helps the dog or cat express its genes to its utmost. Okay. Okay, okay good. Um, I, I want to kind of follow up on that before we talk about the study of these different aspects, and that's to set the stage, and, and Rhonda or Steve, whichever one of you wants to address it, but the DNA is in the gene, and, and as you kind of alluded to, every, every cell has the same DNA, but the cells yeah, don't mostly. look the same mm -hmm. because the DNA is being expressed differently. What are those different stages as DNA is expressed? So, so we have terminology for the different stages. Would you explain those different stages very briefly for a non-technical audience. Okay, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. So your DNA, what's important is your DNA has genes in it. They're segments on the DNA. Those genes code for proteins. That's the most important thing to remember. Proteins are the real workhorses. They, they might be enzymes for uh, metabolism. They might be structural. They might be signaling molecules. So when you think of DNA and gene, think of a protein. Because that's, it's basically the blueprint for a protein. And so um, when you talk about genetics, you're talking about the genes. There's an in-between molecule, which we call a transcript or an mRNA. And that is really a copy of the gene that's instructions for some other machinery to make a protein from it. So that's the in-between of the gene and the protein is the transcript. Okay. And, and, but I, and, I, and, and I think what's important there is, as you mentioned, Dottie, the, the, each cell has its own needs from this entire in, set of instructions. That set of mRNA, the in-between the gene and the protein, that's specific to the cell and specific to what the cell needs. And so it is that pool of, of RNA that is reflective of what the cell is doing at any given time. Okay, so the DNA is, is the, the, the entire encyclopedia. The, the DNA is the encyclopedia. The RNA is, is maybe the chapter for what the cell needs right now. And that's gonna make a protein. So the DNA to RNA is transcription. And yes. the RNA to the protein is translation. Correct. 
But that's not the end of the story because you go from protein to other metabolites. What's that called? Or how is that studied? And we're going to get into the study of yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get into it. But so, I mean, yeah, it's uh, on the omic part, that would be metabolomics. So when you're looking at the metabolites that are produced uh, via these enzymes, these proteins. So the proteins make those metabolites. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and, you know, another way of looking at it is a kidney and a liver cell, okay, they're very different, but they have the same DNA. And it's really which genes are expressed or turned into proteins that make them different. So there are instructions in those tissues, in those cell types, that somehow tell it, hey, or they're programmed, we only need to make these to become a kidney cell, or we only need to make, uh, make these to be a liver cell. And then, of course, there's a lot of response to the environment as well. Okay, so with that foundation, what are omics and, and yeah, what are omics? All right, so, so omics, um, I'll take you through a little history. So there's a lot of controversy over who came up with omics because it's, <laughs> it's crazy. There's over 800 omics right now. I mean, it's just insane. Um, there's actually unknown omics. You know, the, the <laughs> study of everything unknown, yeah. unknown. So, but in the, in the 1920s, there was a German researcher, sorry, I don't remember his name, and he coined the term genome. And what he did was he combined gene with chromosome. So it described the entire content of a chromosome. Chromosomes have DNA, and we have multiple chromosomes. So basically all the genes on that chromosome. Then in the, sometime in the 80s, a journal came out, a scientific journal called um, Genomics. Um, and then it kind of exploded from there. Others say it came from the Greek root oma, which implies mass or everything. Um, so what is omics? Whenever you're describing all of a certain subject, so with genomics, that means you're looking at all the genes. With genetics, you might be looking at one gene, but if you throw that omics on the end, it means we're gonna look at all of them. Okay. So that's Great. really what omics, so in the case of, we had talked about genes when we have a transcript, if we're gonna look at all the mRNAs and those transcripts, we call them transcriptomics. If we want to look at all the proteins, proteomics, mm. and then, of course, metabolites with metabolism, we call it metabolomics. Okay, so if we're looking at all the different stages of a cell as it's being manifested from its, its DNA encyclopedia till we get all the way down to what's actually going on in that cell right now, we might be looking at genomics and transcriptomics mm -hmm. and proteomics and metabolomics and each one is looking at something different but they're all looking at the same cell or the same organism they're all complementary 